Have you ever found yourself swept off your feet by a charming guy only to later realize that things took a surprising nosedive for the worse? It's so easy to mistake red flags for romantic gestures that leave you feeling vulnerable, heartbroken, and confused. So today, I'll be revealing seven seemingly romantic actions that men do that are actually major red flags so you can avoid them. When you connect with someone and there's a physical and emotional connection with that guy, your brain creates a chemical cocktail that's pretty explosive in nature. That means that it blinds you from seeing the truth the way it is, and it's not uncommon for you to mistake things that are happening that might be controlling in nature, might be projective in nature, might even be toxic in nature, with the feeling that you're super intensely connected with someone. So what I wanna do right now by sharing these seven red flags is help you to understand if these things are happening with a guy you're dating or worse, a guy you're in a relationship with, so you can set a boundary, so you can take a pause, so you can, from this emotionally sober state that you're in right now, figure out if there's not something else that's taking place that feels good in the moment, but might be a major roadblock down the road. The first one is what I call the extreme projective praise phase. And that's when a guy doesn't really know you, but is sharing things with you that might even be true, but he has no way of fully verifying they do create a sense of intensity and connection. And if you have been in the desert, metaphorically speaking, not having someone say these things about you, you're so beautiful, you're so unique, you're so special, and even beyond that, then you might feel a false sense of connection with someone and mistakenly think that the guy who's projecting all these things into you actually can see your soul. And when you get that feeling, you get to create a stronger sense of bond with them which, if he's not the right guy, comes down to haunt you later on. The next one is securing exclusivity ASAP phase. And that's when a guy who doesn't know you wants to take you offline and wants to take himself offline very shortly after the connection. He's sharing with you that the attraction is so strong that he feels it in his heart. It's an intuition combined with his sense of knowing the world that you're it and that he really wants to explore this connection exclusively. Now, the challenge with that is that you don't know this dude. So he's asking you in some sort of way, indirectly, to become his girlfriend without really investing the time and energy to secure that. That's exclusivity is something that's earned. It's not something that's a given. So if he's wanting exclusivity this fast, whatever he does with his time, if he wants to take himself offline, that's his thing. But sure that you're not ready for that. Say, hey, I want to continue getting to know you. I want to know that this feeling that we have right now is sustainable. I want to see you in more context. So for that reason, I cannot be exclusive. Now, if he can only be with you exclusively from day one, let it pass. I don't think you're risking something big. I think that there's a subtle controlling stance taking place from the beginning that you want to avoid. If he doesn't understand that you have a higher risk than he does in terms of that initial connection, then he should move on. The third one is the ass against the world pandering. And what I mean by that is when you connect with a guy who is getting to know you, and instead of being nuanced in his approach, nuanced in his perception of others, empathetic with what you're going through, but also aware that there's two sides to every story, whenever you share something about something that happened to you, instead of really taking a step back and understanding what's happening, he's saying, hey, that guy that you, I mean, the one that you're in question here, that you're sharing about, is an a-hole, or your friend doesn't deserve you. Like, he goes all extreme into you and I can conquer the world without really understanding the nuance of what's taking place. You might feel a sense of bonding with him. You might feel like he's there in some sort of protective way, understanding you, but he's pandering to what he thinks you want to hear so you create a false sense of intimacy with him. A guy that you're sharing things with should have the wherewithal to say, I understand you and hear you, and here's the other side. Even if you're in your own right saying something that's unjust, to have the decency and the compassion to not have to punch the world around you and make them all wrong and you right to create that connection. Now, before I go into red flags four through seven, if you're a single woman watching this and you'd like to understand the true core reason why you're still single, what I've done is I've taken 12 years of helping women find love in different countries, different challenges, different age groups, and put them together in a simple quiz you can take in about 60 seconds 
and we'll share with you the number one reason why you're still single. All I have to do, if you want to participate in this, is go to the first link in the description. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and you'll get two things. The answer to the question, why you're still single, and number two, a report that's going to share with you based on your specific blind spot, what's the number one action you can take today to drastically reduce the time it's going to take for you to attract the guy you want. Red flag number four is the Pepe Pew. And what is that? When he wants to, like the little <laughs> skunk that we've all seen growing up, express to you that he's so passionate, he's so in the moment, he's so spontaneous that he needs to be touchy, handsy, connected to you without really investing the time to get to know you. It's early on in the process and he's all over wanting to be sexual with you, wanting to be really physical with you in ways that feel like a little too much. Now, here's the challenge. When you feel really attracted to him physically, you might go for the thing where you believe that what he's saying is true, that he's so connected to you, that there's such a spiritual, emotional, and sp physical connection that he has to actualize that through handsy behavior. My recommendation to you would be, if he is feeling those things, then he should be able to wait a little longer to make sure that the feelings are sustainable and that the thing he's seeing is the truth and that the thing you're seeing in him is the truth as well. So take longer to physically connect with them. When you physically connect early on, you will emotionally feel you're closer to him even if you're not. Your brain will play tricks on you and will get you attached to someone who might be toxic and horrible for you, but because you want to continue that feeling of brain chemistry that's taking place, which is very similar to what heroin would do in your brain, you want to continue that connection and it might be the worst thing you can do in that moment. The next one is the mind reader. And the mind reader is when you feel like the guy knows you so well that he's telling you kind of like what you should think and what you should do and how you should go about things. And you sure, here's what I'm planning on doing. And instead of saying, hey, I see this thing that you might be missing. What, what do you think about that? He's telling you that you shouldn't do it. And he's acting as if he knows you better than you know yourself. And in that spur of the moment experience, you might feel how romantic. He knows me so well that he's telling me what to do and how to go about my things and almost like how to think. And I know it sounds ridiculous right now when you're hearing it this way, but when you're in the middle of one of these things and you feel like the guy really knows you well, he's protecting you instead of controlling you, you might go for it. And you might start slowly pushing away your own sense of autonomy, your own sense of your own decision making to him who knows you so well that's reading your mind. So the mind reader is a guy who wants to tell you how things are instead of how he thinks they are. And if you accept it and you think it's romantic, then you might give away your power and soon realize that he's running your life. The next one is what I call the cutesy jealousy trap. If a guy is really a hole -ish in behavior and he says to you in front of your friends, he throws a tantrum because he's jealous because a guy smiled at you. You weren't doing anything wrong, but the guy smiled at you and now he thinks that you're cheating on him. Well, you'd probably say this is toxic and weird and you'd move away, but if he plays with you, if he's cutesy about it, if he's painting the picture of he's not mean, he just doesn't want you to do it because he loves you so much, he's so intense in you and he can't bear the thought of you connecting with somebody else, and again, starts controlling your behaviors and you think that he loves me so much, he's so into me and you like the guy, so the fact that he feels jealous about you almost feels good, that's a trap. The trap is, the more you give into this, the more the jealousy might grow like a monster, like a Godzilla that's now went from a little monster here to now destroying buildings and start again, running your life. Many of these behaviors lead into control. Many of these behaviors lead into dysfunction. And what you wanna do right now is when you notice them is cut them when they're growing. Don't wait for them to be blown out of proportion before you make a change. If you, at the beginning, cut that jealousy trap early on, then you won't have to face the consequences. The easiest way to do this is if the guy is healthy, have several conversations with him so you can both, as a couple, define what does infidelity mean. Every couple has a slightly different definition. Of course, you can go for the most basic one, having sex with somebody else, but that's just part of it. In your relationship, is flirting with other people cheating? Is porn cheating? What do you consider cheating to be? No right or wrong, whatever you define it as is what will be. Make sure that you respect that, but don't go into the line of doing everything he needs, if he, even if he's playing the cutesy card, because whatever feels cool in the moment will end up feeling oppressive later down the road. The seventh one is what I call the calendar 
hoarder. You might feel it's so amazing that this guy wants to spend so much time with you at the beginning of the relationship. He craves you so much and he finds you so unique and compelling that he's leaving everything away and he enjoys that you leave everything away. Like at the risk of disconnecting from your family, from your friends, even from your work, he wants to spend every waking hour with you. If you really like the guy and there's physical connection taking place, an emotional connection, you might forget the world and think this is really cool and really romantic. But again, if he's vicariously living through you, if his life is such that he's filling the void of his existence through spending time with you at the expense of other things in his life, at the expense of investing in his work, in his business, in his family, maybe he doesn't have those things. And again, he's just connect using the, the connection he has with you to fill the void of his entire life. That's a trap. You might feel connected and special and really swooned by someone who's sharing so much interest in sharing time with you, but as time moves on, it's unsustainable. The last one, I'll give you a bonus one, because I've shared seven already, is the empty I love you. The guy doesn't know you, he's early in the process, you've had a couple of deep conversations and he just blurts it out. I just, I just have to say this, I love you. And you feel, ah, I love him too. And it's, he loves, he doesn't know you. He doesn't know who the hell you are. It's possible he can grow to love you for real. But in that moment, it's a big projection. And if you fall for it, even if it feels intensely right in your heart, you might pay the price down the line. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it would mean a lot to me if you click like and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to continue growing in understanding how you can attract the relationship you want without the need for tricks, manipulation or gimmicks, then go watch this video right here.